could leave his tomb towards the opening of that impressive wadi, which obviously was regarded to be the entrance to the afterlife. Dryer knows that by Cher's time, early ideas of taking food, wine and beer to sustain the dead in the afterlife were still evolving. In the first dynasty, pharaohs also took treasure, weapons and perhaps even servants. Archaeologists believe these early pharaohs killed their servants so they could accompany the king in the afterlife. They were sacrificed and buried in group enclosures surrounding the royal tomb. The pharaoh chair was one of the last to practice human sacrifice at his tomb. And Dreyer is finding he likely took plenty of companions with him. Some were deceased family members and advisors. Some were sacrificed servants. Chair uh, had more than 200, uh, almost 300 subsidiary burials and very little is known of them. We think that uh, a lot of the equipment of the king's chamber and all these subsidiary barriers is still there in the debris. Unlike Seti, the walls of Jair's tomb are blank. The idea of carving the walls with instructions for the pharaohs is still centuries away. At this point, the dead king simply passed through the magic door and into another world. It's far from the complex journey that will evolve by Seti's time, but it carries with it an idea that will resonate with other faiths in centuries to come. Here at Abydos, uh, for the first time, we see the idea of resurrection. They had an idea already developed of physical resurrection, which became so important in Christianity much later. By the time Seti I embarked on his afterlife journey, the idea of resurrection had reached full flower. Inside Seti's tomb, archaeologist Sahi Awas is following clues he thinks may lead him to Seti's burial chamber, the place where his resurrection process began. Seti's tomb is cut into the rock of the Valley of the Kings and descends through multiple levels 